Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 67. Title of the discourse is At Katuma. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. Now, this discourse basically talks about it's uh, directed towards mendicants. Mendicants means people who have le left their lay life uh, and moved into a monk life. So, what are the four dangers for those people? So the background and definitely there, there will be some takeaways that we have as lay people from that. So let us discuss. So, so there was there was this time. The background was that there was this time that five hundred mendicants uh, arrived at Katuma to see the Buddha, and uh, when they were um, exchanging their pleasantries with the resident mendicants, uh, they made a dreadful racket. Racket means kind of sound, lot of sound, and you know noise and everything. So Buddha called them, Buddha called Ananda that what is this happening and why there is so much noise and racket they are making. Ananda said this is because of these mendicants. So Buddha called them and then Buddha reprimanded them. Buddha says, go away mendicants, I dismiss you, you are not to stay in my presence. So Buddha was angry right? That uh, on these mendicants because they were making a lot of noise and were not you know, kind of disciplined. So at that time the Sakyans of Katuma, uh, people of Katuma, they came to Buddha and said, that please, please do not, uh, uh, please approve of these mendicants. Please do not uh, kind of dismiss them. And they gave the uh, analogy of like uh, seedling, that if a young seedling doesn't get water, they may change and fall apart. Or if a young calf doesn't get to see his mother, its mother, it may change and fall apart. Then Brahma, Brahma came to the Buddha and said that no, no, please you uh, approve these mendicants and uh, uh, just forgive them and uh, uh, that way. So, then Buddha got convinced. Buddha said, "Okay." Then uh, Buddha, uh, then Buddha said to uh, Sariputta and Mahamoglana, one of uh, two of uh, his chief uh, disciples, about the four four dangers of uh, so four, when you go into the water, you should anticipate four dangers. So what four? The danger of waves, marsh crocodiles, whirlpools, and gharials. Similarly, there are four dangers. For anyone who that similarly a gentleman who goes forth from the lay life to homelessness in this teaching and training should anticipate four dangers and this is uh, apt for those people who for whom the monk life seems very kind of a fascinating and glamorous and no, not glamorous but very fascinating right and I was one of them right uh, but then the dangers to a uh, li, uh, to a monk life are more than as a lay people because the rules and regulations that they have to follow are even much more, right? So, what are the dangers? The first danger is the danger of waves. So, the danger of waves, Buddha explained is that the the person goes fro forth from lay life to homelessness and uh, he says that hopefully I can find an end to this entire mass of suffering that I have. And then uh, there are mendicants there who instruct them. The existing mendicants were there. They instruct them that how to, you should go like this, come back like this. You should look to the front like this, to the side like this. You should contract your limbs like this and extend them. There are a lot of rules actually in, a, in the monastery code. Lot of rules are there. So they think that formerly when we were lay people, we were, adv we were advising and instructing others. Now people who are junior to us, they are advising. And, so they, are, they have gone into the monk life, but they have not yet left the kind of the ego. Right? So they, they say that our ch people who are age of our children or grandchildren, they are advising and instructing. So they resign from the training and return to a lesser life. So this is the first danger of waves, which is basically the danger of anger and distress. Now what comes the second danger? danger second danger is danger of marsh crocodiles. So here Buddha says that the person goes into the, uh, uh, as a monk, becomes a monk, but then they find their spiritual companions advising and instructing them, you may eat, consume, taste, drink these things, but not these things, only eat at this time, you don't eat at night time or a wrong time. So then they think that earlier when we were lay people, we used to get all these foods and delicious foods and, and prepared and we can we could eat anytime. Now these mendicants, uh, are imagine they can gag our mouths and then they basically resign the treating and return to a lesser life. So the second danger of marsh crocodiles, Buddhist, uh, it's a term for gluttony. Gluttony means excess of 
indulge in excess in eating or drinking right so that's the second danger of that thought so buddha is highlighting the thought process that the, the the dangers are and because of those thought processes they return from the monk life to the uh, lay life third danger third danger is danger of whirlpools where uh, when they go uh, to uh, arms to beg for arms without guarding their body speech and mind without establishing mindfulness and without restraining the sense faculties then they see a householder or a child amusing you know uh, some uh, father and son playing the, between themselves and they see the the you know people who are in family life they are supplied with all the five types of sensual stimulation they see all these things and then they see that you know i could have enjoyed my wealth and make merit and these kind of thoughts come in them and then they resign back to the lay life that's the third kind of danger which is the five kinds of sensual stimulation what are the five kinds sights sounds ears smell touch right pleasures through the five then for fourth is the danger of ghadiyals what the ghadiyals that they uh, robe up and they go to take arms into into village or town without guarding their body and mind without establishing mindfulness without restraining the sense faculties there they see a female scantily clad with revealing clothes lust infects their mind so friends if it's a, if if your mind is not powerful right imagine a scantily clad female right and and you, you see her right if you are male you see her and then you know that lust seeds of lust rise this is this is exactly how it is and all everything just returns and they resign back lust infects their mind and resign the training and return to a lesser so the danger of gharial what is a gharial it's referring to the females right similar way in case of a nun it can be a male right but that's the fourth danger so so this is the fourth danger basically uh, buddha said about people who move from lay life to homelessness now the lesson for us is that be mindful as we go about our so we are lay people definitely uh, so uh, right but still i need to be mindful i need to be mindful of my mind my, my mind if uh, it should not generate thoughts of ill will hatred lust my speech harsh speech should not come out from my mouth it should be kind and compassionate and my actions bodily actions i should not you know have incur violence towards anybody i should restrain my faculties so that things i should take care of at all times right so it's though it's related to it's more inclined towards the mendicant but it has our lessons for us also the link to the entire description uh, the this discourse is there in the description do read it at your end whatever learnings or insights that you get do do to share it in the comments section also and i hope this was useful thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya